Welcome back everybody to a brand new FTB Infinity Evolved on Expert Mode with Krillic here. Oh man, those towers still look great. There's still more that needs to happen with them, but I'm kind of moving on. <laughs> Not moving on, but we got other things going on. So, as you can see over here, we've started building what I'm going to claim to call the greenhouse. And... As you can see, I kind of just have the beautiful square section set up here. Um, and then inside of here, I got the open blocks building guide. And I've kind of set this guy up. And basically, you supp supply it a redstone signal. And if you click on different sides and whatnot, you can change the size of the dome. And you can change the shape and stuff like that as well. So, very cool. But what I'm kind of envisioning here is having this beautiful, beautiful uh, greenhouse and in the middle, a big old dome type thing for trees and for the witchery stuff in the middle there. So that's my initial idea with this greenhouse. And then my idea is to have them just expand and take over kind of this whole little area, like a massive greenhouse with all the different crops that you can plant and trees and all that kind of stuff. All of that is going to happen in these sections. So pretty cool stuff. Um, as you guys saw on the text, this dome is set to a 15 by 15 by 15 high. So pretty easy to remember, but what we're going to be doing is, of course, not bringing the dome all the way down to the ground here with building blocks, but it's more to get the dome on the top part uh, correct. So I kind of need to shape the structure around the dome, um, you know, around the outside of it here on the interior circle, and then we'll probably still have crops and stuff because with these torches, I've kind of mapped out the size of a witchery circle, right? So this would be the first line of circle, second line of circle, and third line of circle. So we have still a decent amount of room all the way around this thing where this circle is going to kind of just curtail in just like so. So it's going to look pretty sharp, I think. And we're going to have lots of room to bring in a lot of nature and all that kind of stuff that's very important to witchery and probably put the altar pretty much smack dab in the middle and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's going to look pretty stellar. There's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done on it, but you know, it's one of those things. Let me quickly show you the slime setup over here that I've worked on. Okay. Okay. Balls, more, more gelatinous slime. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, good. But as you can see, we have a massive little section here. Um, so much so that I actually need to do some upgrades to this drawer. Uh, but basically what I've done is I've put them on the backside as well to get them dried. Um, and gone all the way to the ceiling, all using the item ducts. And then simply down here, I've switched this up to gelatinous slime with a signalum servo to now fuel these with the gelatinous slime instead of the, the slime balls, the dried slime. So, pretty cool. It's working very nicely. I'm actually going to just remove these now, and we'll see the it all of a sudden move on over it sends a stack at a time basically for each one of these which is awesome quick to get it going and now we're producing energy at 24 rf per tick at 41,000 at a time so great little setup really recommend it it's working quite nicely i have to quickly grab a little upgrade and i think i have to make all new upgrade stuff and you name it but all in due time um, what else is new? I've kind of just developed things, mostly just the witchery stuff. So I'm going to do some more, uh, work on all of that, and I'll be back with you guys in but a sh Jake. A what? A Jake? A shake. So I did want to bring you guys back in for just a little bit of building. I wanted to take you into my world a little bit and kind of what goes on in my brain, which is a little bit scary. I'm going to warn you now, but 
it is quite good. Now, one of the cool things about this open blocks is you can literally just follow the little diagram. And I think, if I remember correctly, we can just kind of just follow it around, right? And we can get a quick little idea of what our overall shape is going to turn out to be. Um, sadly, you can't just place the blocks in there, as far as I'm aware. Anyways, I can't remember if at one point you used to be able to or not, but uh, still, that would be pretty, f pretty awesome if you could, right? So, anyways, I'm just going to cruise around here, and I do actually want to talk to you guys a quick sec for uh, a brief moment as I am going on holidays. Um, actually, I have the day off today when this video is coming out and I'm gonna be recording my butt off or as much as possible anyways to get some content up for all of you so that we can keep this beautiful, beautiful thing that we have going on going. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I'm off with on a guy's trip and we're gonna have try to have lots of fun. I'm gonna try to, you know, just have fun. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty darn awesome. I'm actually gone for uh, yeah, about five days, so a decent amount of time. And I don't think I'll have a video out for every single day. I can pretty much guarantee that because of the cold was part of the reason and uh, all that kind of stuff. I am feeling better if you can't tell as well. I wanted to briefly mention that and really thank all of you for your well wishes um, throughout the time of me sounding like a fool on video. So thank you again for the support on all of that. Um, anyways, I am going to get all the way around this silly old sphere or dome shape I guess and we will see how it looks because I don't really know for sure if it's gonna look right so a couple quick words of advice because I've seen a lot of comments of people where they're like oh man I wish I could build as good as you especially when I did these towers and I mean honestly Google Images is great at getting ideas in your head um, but you know, you just kind of take your original idea. So how I came up with this was I was like, you know what, witcheries, nature base, but I know that we're also dealing with circle magic because I know the mod. So let's do a greenhouse. So I started looking up a whole bunch of different greenhouses on Google image and, and some of the ideas. And then I'm like, okay, that seems cool, but let's combine that with that and see how well it looks. All right, now this, I, I don't build stuff in creative. I really don't, I build it on the fly. And what I'll do is I'll place down a whole bunch of blocks, basically like you see me doing right here. Um, and then I basically zoom away, like you just saw me do, all the way back to a nice vantage point. Um, now what this does is it gives you a little bit more perspective overall on the entire build so definitely a lot easier with a jetpack but i felt like right there for example definitely too uh loose too there wasn't enough structure there to hold this in place right so you're kind of thinking that this is attached at these only these points right so it needs to be pretty strong and when it was only a block it didn't really show that sturdiness so anyways, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to get some glass and all that stuff going. I think I got some more sand and whatnot working for me, but I'm going to get some glass and we'll see how it kind of develops in all together. Hopefully that helped you guys. Definitely just place blocks, take a look, see what you think, see what you like and go from there. All right, so there we go. I have the dome in place. Now you can't really tell because it's got the quite clear glass from Ender IO. It's quite clear. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> but it's really going to allow us to see in to our witchery area and really gonna enhance what's under it, right? And that's the main focus. I don't want the focus to be 
you know, the building. I want the focus to be the nature inside of the building, right? And then, of course, I do need more glass, and we're just going to kind of fill these in pretty pretty much flat. If eh, I think we're going to go just plain old flat roof here and keep it nice and simple. Now, there's a few other tricks that I wanted to show you guys for, like, lighting and stuff like that that I highly recommend. Um in your build especially in modded minecraft and this will basically be the end of the build talk if you know what i mean um but i hope you guys you know maybe you picked up on a couple ideas or something like that as we went chisel can be your friend but also your enemy you can go too far with chisel just saying i've seen it done it happens um, but one of the things that I want to talk about is this room. So as you can see, the torches are no longer on the floor. But I'm also starting to not like the torches on the wall. Now, once you do have silk touch, for example, on this hammer. So I can take this guy, for example, right here, and a carpenter block. And I can throw down a carpenter block, just like so. Okay. Now, if I remove these torches and I hit F7 on the keyboard uh, it might not be enough but uh, I might need to remove these no okay but if say this was a red X here or somewhere along here I can't believe there's no red X's there anyways but basically what you can do is you can apply a grass block or any of your building type blocks to this and now it's hidden in the floor like you see there now you can take a piece of glowstone dust and you can shift right click it and you can see now that it's emitting light so over here that's exactly what i did i liked the lamps here but i added where is it right there carpenter block and i put a piece of glowstone on it because right over here there was one spot that was a little bit too low of light so you can definitely hide your lighting quite nicely in modded minecraft just by hitting that little bit with glowstone and away you go and it also saves a ton on torches which in this pack means wood or stone type thing and away you go so for example here we got a little bit of the red right and you know that's not great we don't want that right we don't want mobs to be spawning in our base just like so so i'm gonna do the exact same thing right in the middle of each of these with a little bit of light and that should just light up the area perfectly for us and we should be good to go so let's do this so boom grass block it and shift right click glowstone and away went the marks of where mobs could spawn now obviously carpenter blocks i gotta get some more of those and they do cost wood and all that kind of stuff so you know, it's not really a huge savings, but it's still better than nothing, for sure. So, let's get a few more of those. They're quite easy to make overall. There we go. 25 more. That's not bad. And I'll finish up this job. Getting glowstone dust, pretty straightforward as well. And I do actually want to proceed so that I don't have to go back in the nether. But... This way we can kind of minimize on our torches a little bit more. I'm, I'm okay with them in some places, but, you know, when we had, like, the two entrances here, there was just way too many torches for me to be happy with that setup. So, that's my other idea. Let's get into a little bit of other stuff here. So, one of the items we need next is anointing paste from witchery. And as you can see, the recipe has changed from old school recipes. But basically, it requires one of each of the witchery seeds. Now, I think I have all of the water choke, I have belladonna, and I have mandrake. But I do not have the snowbell seeds. But luckily, we can mutate them, just like we've done other ones, with belladonna and mandrake. So those two combined will give us Snowbell. So I'm going to get some of these growing because we're going to need a lot of this stuff. It is time to start our farms, and that's going to be very useful going forward. Let's do that, and 
Then, from there, we also need to get more mutandus, if you remember that whole thing that we were working on. Okay? So, I'm thinking the witchery seeds, I believe there's five or six of them. I'm thinking we're going to keep those as close as possible to the inside part here of the the base because most of our witchery stuff's going to be in the middle so let's keep it all kind of close together and in the middle and then on the outside maybe we just have some regular crops more so so uh we need a little bit of water i'm pretty sure all of these do require uh fertile watered ground just like any old standard crop so let's get that going and you know, I mean, we could even use... Now, the greenhouses will be just for greenhouses, I think. The only other thing is I left my hoe all the way upstairs. <laughs> oh. Hello, Zombert. Oh, boy, you fell. You fell good. All right, there we go. Let's get the sapphire matic. That'll do the job. And away we go. Pretty good episode so far. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you guys like the building section. It was uh, something that I just wanted to do. And I knew a lot of people were also requesting it as well. Oh, dang. I really wish you could change that back again. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. Okay, good. That happens when you click twice on the same thing with your matic or your hoe, whichever. Okay, so uh, let's see. Say this one becomes our mandrake, but for right now, we're not too worried about that. I got my crop sticks right here, and we're going to try our best to get ourselves some snowbell. Okay, so that was belladonna and mandrake. Boom. Beautiful. Now, I do have my watering can on me as well, so we can water these, get them all nice and growing. Uh, it's becoming nighttime. I really don't want to be out here at night because there's no light. Uh, but I'm going to work to get our snowbell seeds and probably set up some of our farms here. And then we can work on our witch's cauldron. Oh, hoo -hoo, indeed. Spooky witchery craftery. Love it. Uh, Mandrake, can you grow a little faster, please? Thanks. All right. So, as you can see, I've done a little bit of leveling. Nothing too crazy and got a nice little big farm here. But we do have the 10, 10, 10 Mandrake seeds done. And I'm going to work on the other ones here as we go. But I wanted to point out one small little fact. Is the... Um, the water artichokes, okay? Now, these guys do actually require water. Yes, so you do need to do that double tap thing that we were complaining about a little bit earlier. And then you put down the crop stick and the water artichoke seed. So if you're struggling at that point, that's how you do it, okay? Very important. Um, but I need to get a few more seeds here. I always want to keep at least two seeds at all time. So I'm going to continually grow a few more of these as we go. Um, as you can see, we now have three snowbell seeds, for example. And we're about to get our... Th we have three ar water artichoke. We have three belladonna now. All good. But this is basically all I do. I go too wide like that. And the middle one is going to be our mutation one. And that will then usually be stronger than the two on either side of it. You replace the weakest one. You do it all over again. And away you go. So that's basically how I breed the seeds. So for example, this was a 441 and this is a 547. So this belladonna seed right here, we can bring it over and we can analyze it. And it should be a combination of the two in this rare circumstance. So a 544. So it went from a 547 and a 441 to a 544. So this guy here is worse. So we're going to break him and we're going to plant down the new seed. And that's going to give us our spare belladonna anyways. So I'm going to let that guy grow. I'm going to, these guys are pretty much all grown. Same thing applies even with the watery ones. Be careful of weeds, of course. So here we have a 152 and a 111. So I'm going to throw this guy in here and 
Bingo, a 2-4-3, which is definitely better than an all-1, okay? So that's basically all I do for all of this stuff. And of course you get the loot as well, the water artichoke and the belladonna and the mandrake and all that kind of stuff. So that's more or less what I do for all of this stuff. But we now have one of all of the seeds, okay? Um... Wolfsbane, I need to just plant as well. Uh, let's just plant it down right there for right now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay. He can grow. Okay. Good. Now, we're pretty much there. We have all four seeds. Now we need some cyan metal, mana petals and a water bottle. So let's jump on upstairs here and get those items. So the water bottle, I don't think I've made any bottles, but let's quickly go and double check in our inventory here. We may have made some. I can't recall why, but I don't think so. Do we have any? No. Well, I mean, we do have that one, the potion of invisibility that I got, but we're not going to use that for this. Okay. So a little bit of a water bottle, that's fine. Let's get our cyan meta mana petals done upstairs in our Batania section. Now, I'm debating, should this Batania section move into a greenhouse? Please let me know down in the comments. I would really appreciate the advice. Okay, four petals, like a so. Good, let's just craft it right up here. We got the four cyan petals. We have the water bottle and does it matter i don't think it matters which way so we'll do this 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 and this okay apparently it does mandrake belladonna snowbell there we go anointing paste beautiful okay now what do we do with that you're probably asking now there is books that you can get with witchery but do recall and do remember that there are certain recipes that have changed. So, the books aren't always true. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Uh, it would be the brews and infusions one here that you'd probably have to get. And I don't really have an interest in getting that at the moment. So, what we need is a cauldron. And basically, you place down the cauldron, you apply the anointing paste. Bingo, bango, we now have a witch's cauldron beautiful now if we remember correctly i'm after mutandus so mandrake root exhale of the horned one and some egg okay well i kept that one egg um do i have more eggs yes i do a few more let's get uh let's do four yeah four works i'm not sure what this water artichoke globe that i got is but or is that just the one drop I th that might just be the one drop that I got. Okay, so we'll put that away and that away. We'll throw that extra water artichoke seed in there as well. So we have the mandrake, we have the four eggs, and we need four exhale of the horned ones. And that's going to get us more mutandus. All right, here we go, here we go. Now we're rolling. Let's throw down the witch's cauldron just right there because, of course, we're going to have to fill it up with water and equally guess what else we need fire oh i forgot all about that yes i did so we should have a flint and steel somewhere i have no clue where that flint and steel it gets to sometimes there it is beautiful and we're gonna need i guess just a piece of netherrack for right now that's probably the best way to go about this for now um, I would prefer to get something like Nitor that's a little bit quieter and not as much of an impact, but, uh, you know, negatively to the build or any wood that may be nearby type thing. So, oh yeah, I forgot there's a roof on it. <laughs> so, I'm going to set this fire ablaze and we should get this cauldron starting to cook. Very nice. Very nice. 
we're gonna change all this out to dirt soon anyways so it's starting to bubble bubble boil and trouble uh, so basically as far as I know we just throw these in and I usually prefer to go in that correct order so mandrake root exhale the horned one egg okay mandrake root exhale the horned one egg and it does a little swirly swirly and it should happen it doesn't need ultra power does it okay good whoo I got a little nervous there for a second. <laughs> I didn't think it did. It was a pretty basic recipe. Um, but there you go. You do have to sadly fill it up three times with a bucket, which is a little bit annoying. So we'll probably automate that process here pretty soon. Boom, boom, and boom. Get a little bit more mutandus. And what we're going to do is we're looking for a Rowan sapling and a couple of the other witchery items. Now, some of these items... I'm not sure if you can actually find them in the real world or not, but one of the best ways to do it is just with this mutandus and just simply clicking on a sapling, okay? So let's get a quick little uh, oak sapling here. Uh, let's get a few. Let's get a couple. And what we're going to do is just place it down, like right here, even and click on it with the mutandus. And as you can see, it changes it. So you can get lily pads, mushrooms. Glintweed is actually really good. Uh, let's take that. Okay, boom, mushroom, birch, mushroom, rowan sapling, excellent. That is one of the ones we needed, beautiful. Let's see what else we can get. Uh, birch, spruce, oak, jungle. Hmm, I actually don't have any jungle saplings yet, but I don't care. Uh, we Oh, a hawthorn. Very nice, very nice. And last one, no go. Okay, that's fine. So basically, you can use mutandus on almost any living thing, like that poppy that's even in my hand now, and we can basically go from there. So we do have the item we are looking for, which is beautiful exactly what I was hoping to see. So we're going to come down here and basically we're going to plant the thing. And I think we'll just plant it right here. And we're going to look to capitalize and get some growing. Boom! Just like so. That's why I built the dome big on purpose. The glint weed. I can't remember exactly what it does, but I think it's used in some recipes or something like that with witchery um but i need my lumber axe where is my lumber axe there it is right there all the mossy on it for the repair kind of threw me for a loop oh boy that is a problem okay we got an ant we have an ant people okay so when you chop down a witchery thing you can get these guys Ah! An ant. Lots of, lots of health. 200 and some odd health. Luckily, I do have decent armor, but they're really annoying. So, make sure that you are prepared. One of the good ways of beating them is to hide behind something, but they do do a decent amount of damage, so please do be careful. Luckily, like I said, I have the flux infused armor armor so we're okay right now also be careful they can trample your crops just a warning just setting you up for success so anyways now that we have that rowan sapling and we got a few more which is exactly what i was looking for i'm gonna sleep here and we will set up the witch's oven to cook out that rowan sapling all right, so we're cooking up the uh, Rowan saplings in the witch's oven. I'm hoping that we get the item, the Whiff of Magic, right off the bat, and we did. Beautiful. Now, this guy is used for a lot of different things. One of them is the impregnated leather that we will need pretty soon. Um, but the other thing is the Attune Stone here. So, Attune Stone with a Mana Diamond and a Lava Bucket. Now, why do we need the Attune Stone? Here, that is a great question. The reason we want all of this is for two reasons. One, a blood altar for blood magic requires an attuned stone. 
okay? So pretty important, an alchemical furnace, some mana steel, and some cobblestone and living rock, all right? Now the other thing is, on the witchery side of things, well, a witchery altar requires an attuned stone as well as a blood altar, and we need six of these blocks. So we actually need to make three blood altars, so that's three attuned stone, plus another two, so that's five attuned stones all together. Yowzers, right? So a decent amount of stuff overall is required. So I'm going to get to work a little bit on some of that. I don't think we'll... Let me check the time on this video, actually. I want to get a few more things put together, but I've been playing for a very long time, and I feel like we're pretty much at wrapping up. Alrighty, yeah, we are definitely at wrapping up point. I believe we're past 30 minutes already, but let's get our blood altar anyways. A tuned stone, just like that. At least you get the bucket back, right? And we need a living rock slab. That is the last piece that we require, and I'm pretty sure that is just like so. Beautiful. Bam. Blood altar. Beautiful. We have it. Let me know your ideas on the blood altar. Let me know your ideas on everything on this episode. So much stuff to talk about down in the chat. I'll be looking forward to your comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe. All that fun stuff. Bye-bye for now. See ya.